very warm welcome back from the break. I'm Sumner Sambo and you're still watching this week. Uh, now, a coalition of members electing the 10th House of Representatives that is said to be inaugurated, um, which is otherwise known as the Joint Task 10th Assembly, has met in Abuja. The group which says its objective is the unity of Nigeria and the stability of the incoming assembly is an amalgamation of all the political parties with elected representatives coming to the 10th House of Reps. Now, can the group provide the driving force to decide who becomes the next Speaker of the House of Representatives? Well, we are being joined in the studio now by one of the spokespersons of uh, the Joint Tax, uh, which is Honorable Akin Alabi, who is a member of the All Progressives Congress uh, from Oyo State. Uh, he's also joined by another member of the Joint Tax 10th Assembly, Honorable um, Adedeji Stanley, and uh, who is here with us. Uh, 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 le let's start with you, Honorable Akin Alabi. Let's talk about this group and um, its aim. Uh, it looks like what you're aiming at is to produce the nationalist and uh, widely acceptable uh, speaker of the House of Representatives. But in the light of what we are saying and allegations of imposition, do you think uh, that is achievable? Oh, of course, it's very achievable. Thanks for being, thanks for having me again. Uh, it's very achievable. The aim of the group is simple. We want to go to that election on June 13th as a united front. And one of the ways we can achieve that is by zoning. We don't want a rancorous election. We don't want a disconcerted 10th House of Representatives. A lot of people are looking at the election, but we're also looking at four years of the House. Because if you don't manage it very well, it can be very volatile. It can be put, it's a potentially volatile House with a lot of new members and all that. I was listening to Honorable Sada Soli, and he was right about that. If you don't manage it well, then there can be problems. And one of the best ways to manage it is to go as a united front. So members across polit political parties, we came together and said, let's form a joint task. Now, we are not for any particular candidate, right? But we're saying wherever the ruling party, the majority party, the APC, is going to zone uh, the speakership to, then we're going to follow. So we cut across members, for example, uh, across partisan geopolitical zone. For example, our chairman, uh, Kumo, is from Gombe State. Uh, Co-chairman, uh, Kingsley Chinda, is from River State, PDP. Our secretary is Ma Honorable Medaki, NMPP from Kano State. Um, APC, Honorable, my big brother here, Honorable Stanley Lajide, Adedeji Stanley, is of, of the PDP as well. So we cut across political parties and we're saying, okay, we'll wait for the ruling party to zone, then we tow and, and we go for the competent candidate, the most competent candidate in that particular zone. Okay, and I will add it, DJ, I come to you. How, what was the difference actually between uh, this and then those who call themselves the greater majority? I mean, a coalition of opposition political parties, which they say that uh, they are determined to produce the speaker. Thank you very much. Um, again, uh, Honorable Adedeji Stanley Olaji, um, of your state, a member of PDP. I think it's also good to say that if you see the combination here, it tells a story. <laughs> yeah. One of the biggest issues that we have right Nigeria is sharply divided right now. And we need stability in the country. And even as member of opposition, what we want, despite the fact that we are going to provide constructive opposition, the most important thing right now is the project Nigeria. The unity of Nigeria is key. And we all come in together uh, as one major force. I mean, I'm not going to sit down and talk about the caucuses and what they stand for. What this caucus stand for is the unity of the house, unity of Nigeria, Nigerian project, how we are going to stabilize the house, how we are going to make sure that we deliver the quality representation that the Nigerians are agitating for. So have, that you, have you in any way settled for Rebu Tajuddin Abbas, which we hear that uh, not to some my, people not are alleging that there are plans to impose him, others are saying that he's a consensus candidate? One thing I don't do, I don't listen to speculations, and I don't just go to social media and pick up headlines. Uh, things must be presented formally in order for us to take them. So if they're not presented formally, uh, for me, it's still a hearsay. So for now, until 
uh, the uh, ruling party uh, decides on the zone and it can, where they want to zone the uh, speakership, we we'll still await that decision. And once that decision is uh, properly communicated in the right channels, then the next step will follow. But for right now, we're waiting for that declaration. As a party leader in the state, Governor Shemakin, they giving you directives or hints as to who you should settle for. <laughs> you know, we, we stand for the unity of Nigeria. I mean, that's very clear. With, um, with my governor on that. We stand for unity of Nigeria. The progress of Nigeria is one that uh, we, couldn't, we can just not negotiate. So right now, that's where we stand. All right. Um, I can't let be. As, as an honorable member, you would uh, see that there are these fears among some of your peers that we may actually have what happened in 2015 repeating itself and uh, what happened in 2011. There are some people who are actually saying that they would want to pay the president-elect Bola Metinubu back in his own coin for refusing to endorse Mulika Takonde in 2011. Well, what would you say to those kind of people? A lot of people are going to say different things. You talked about the greater minorities called greater <laughs> minorities. But they call themselves the greater yeah, majority. Yeah, so um, they actually call themselves the greater minority because they are minority but they have higher numbers, so greater minority. So, but just to speak to that, anything is possible if you don't put your acts together, right? You want something, you want your group or your section or your favorite to win an election. If you don't put your, ha your house in order, things can happen definitely. And that's one of the main reasons why we have this joint task force. The minorities, you say, if they come together and, uh, and, and present um, the, ma the majority number, he's of the PDP. He's in a joint task. Joint task. Honorable Kingsley Chinda is of the PDP. He, he, he's part of the joint task. Medaki of NMPP is part of the joint task. So this is not about caucuses or no caucuses. That's why we said this joint task is not about any candidate. We want the election to go smoothly, and we must go into it as a united front. So some people might be planning things. It's a democracy. Some people will try. People will wake up and say, I want to be speaker. I want to be deputy speaker. And they will scheme. It's politics. It's democracy. We yeah, but specifically, but when you look... our duty to put our house in order to make sure that whoever we decide to back will sail through and there won't be issues and will work well with the Yeah, but I mean, there was this consensus around the candidate in 2011. And the president-elect is said to have preferred Amenu Waziri Tambual instead of Mulika Takonde, who happens to be a Yoruba from his own region. And people are saying that, look, if he has become the president-elect and he's wanting a consensus so that he doesn't have a problem in his government, he caused trouble for someone else in his own government. And so people are going to pay him back. Well, what will you say about that? I was a member of the House, for example, yes. at that time. And there was a lot of rumors we heard, but that has no relevance here. To be honest with you, we've got, out of that assembly, maybe five are still in this particular assembly. So that story we're saying, that narrative we're pushing, some people are pushing, you know, we've got almost 300 new members. Do you think they're going to go into that house thinking about Honorable Molika or Honorable Tambua? It's a different ball game this time around, but it's potentially volatile. So we must put our house in order. Honorable Sada Soli was spot on about that, right? Put our house in order, have a lot of background meetings, a lot of consultations before we come out. We hear a lot that there's going to be another meeting tomorrow, that we're going to hear some form of announcement. We thought so last Wednesday as well. Every week we hear new names. Yeah, I mean, instead names. of people dropping we, out, we, I mean, we, people are coming into the race. It's not central. Even it's there's declaration central. today. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you had a declaration today. Uh, Gaji, Gaji, yeah, today. Yes. Uh, and, um, yeah, it's, and, and it's a you have the majority leader to also declare a quality candidate. We have quality candidates across board, across the dual political zones. If we all say we're a quality candidate, I believe I'm a quality candidate as well. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not coming out. Okay. But if everyone says I'm quality, I'm quality, we're going to have a rancorous and gather. The so there has to be consensus funny. building. Yeah. Okay, Honorable uh, uh, Lajide, let's talk about uh, the fears that people are nursing that this group is being put together by Governor Nyesom Wiki to support and shore up 
uh, you know, some sort of um, uh, support for the uh, president-elect. So that he's working with other group of governors to see how uh, they produce a speaker. I mean, using his own leverage in the PDP to provide support for a group within the APC that will support, you know, a candidate that wouldn't give uh, Bola Tinubu, you know, any headache in his government. What do you have to say to that? Well, uh, Sambo, let me, let me just put this thing in perspective for you. You know, it, it's very normal when you did human behaviors, we speculate a lot. I'm one of uh, Governor Shea McKinney's, uh, you know, frontline men. You know, so it's, I think it would be uh, ridiculous that uh, somebody would say, ah, oh, Governor Shea, you planted me in this uh, joint task. I <laughs> five talks here and there. You, you understand, as a matured man, a matured politician, that basically I know exactly you know, look, let's look at the issues of Nigeria. Let's not worry about all these speculations, uh, Wike, Planted, uh, Chinda, to uh, look, they're just pure speculations. But the, the real issue here is unity of Nigeria. And, and, and how do we achieve that? Because, I mean, the task ahead is going to be strong. A lot of people are trying to present um, a tent assembly uh, that wouldn't uh, be uh, too antagonistic to the uh, uh, executive, but also they don't want uh, a tent assembly that is in bed with the executive, like we've been hearing allegations here and there of this outgoing night assembly. Talk to us. Are you having plans towards that? Because, because, we, chose, because we choose to work together to form a coalition, does it mean that we are going to be robber stampers? No, that's not it at all. We are actually going to give Nigeria a very credible, constructive, not destructive, constructive opposition. So if you're looking for destructive opposition, that's not what Nigeria needs right now. What Nigeria needs right now is constructive opposition where we can pull things together, make things work, and provide alternative views when required. Okay, but the goal is how do we repair the state of Nigeria? That is the key. So our focus is just like when you're playing golf, you have to keep your eyes on the ball. Yeah. If you take your eyes off the ball, you are just gonna hit the hair. So right now, our focus should be how to get Nigeria moving. And that's exactly what we are well, going to do. That sounds like a lofty idea, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but a very uh, crucial task ahead for you. Yeah. As we try to round off this conversation, there are talks of alleged plans by Speaker Femi Bajabia Miller, who's the outgoing speaker, and then Nasu Erufai, and then uh, the party, including the president-elect, to uh, impose on Abu Tajuddin Abbas. Has this issue come up for discussion among your joint, joint task? task? No, 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 no. Joint task, I tell you for free. If the party leadership wakes up tomorrow and says, we're going not central, joint task will follow. So that rubbishes this rumor, doesn't it? So I'm telling you that this joint task will follow. We're waiting for the direction. We're waiting for leadership to provide direction. And once it's provided, we'll go for the competent individuals. Because another misconception is that when people, some people say, well, zoning, why are you zoning? Just giggle for someone competent. No, when we say zoning, that doesn't mean we're gestationing competence. They're not mutually exclusive, right? We will say, let's look for the most competent in that particular zone, then the joint task. Are, are you also uh, considering so, issues of religion, uh, considering what's happening in your party that you already have number one and number two coming from a particular religion? Yeah, we, we, we are hearing different things. Look, joint task is not really looking at religion, right? Joint task is... But you can discard it. We need, to, we, need to we need to look at the focus of joint task here. As, even members of this joint task, obviously, we are politicians. We might have individual preferences, right? But as a group, the whole, the entire essence of this group is we're waiting for the APC to provide leadership, to, to provide guidance, to provide direction, and we'll follow the guidance. So it doesn't matter who is politicking. It doesn't matter who Tajuddin Abbas 
he's talking to, he's talking to uh, uh, Governor Erufa, he's talking to Ashwa you know, It's fine. They, you want to become speaker, you've got to move. He's a <laughs> and convince people. He's a yeah, candidate yeah but Honorable Olajide, he's talking about waiting for APC. Are you also waiting on the PDP to provide a direction? Let me say Because this. your party let, has let, to provide let, direction. Let, 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 as, let me say this. Um, we all came together. We all had different alliances and preference of candidates before we joined this, okay? So, but we say, okay, whatever it is that they decide, they're the majority, they have the right to pick their speaker. Okay, whoever you decide will follow you. But we are going to be part of the decision making, picking the right candidate. So if you now have three candidates from one geopolitical zone, we'll sit, we'll sit down together and vet that candidate. Mm -hmm. And based on that, we'll pick the right candidate that we're all going to support okay. in so the best interest of Nigerian How project. do you foresee the 10th Assembly as we try to conclude this conversation in terms of positive contributions to reducing unemployment, creating uh, you know, an atmosphere for investments in the economy, and then a presidency of the country under Bola Metinubu from the opposition perspective. Well, let me, from the position of opposition, we also know that for a fact that Nigeria, the economy is very volatile right now. Not, we're Nigeria no, is not in isolation. It's, the meltdown is around, it's a global thing. But the situation in Nigeria is very peculiar. It starts from the leadership of the House. Whoever the speaker would be, must be somebody that basically is very vast, somebody that basically can, we can all put our heads together, talk about technology, talk about healthcare, talk about financial sector, and the, the beat goes on. So it's, it, it starts from one. Once we start from there, I think everything else will roll together. Yeah, and uh, could, could that person be someone who presented the highest number of bills in the outgoing night oh, assembly? The, outgoing. the highest number of bills <laughs> no, from the outgoing. <laughs> Sam <laughs> Sam <laughs> I'm asking you because there are talks that it's, it's that's the competence record. that you're looking for. It's and uh, that person. It's public record. Such the numbers as the highest number of bills and highest number of bills assented to by the president has become law today. So it makes him a credible candidate, PhD holder. It's quality, no doubt. If the APC, if the, if the leadership says we're going there, we have no hesitation of following him, all right? As long as the, everybody's carried along, the house in put in, is put in order, and no surprises here and there, then we'll be fine. And if he goes elsewhere, there are quality candidates across other zones. Right. The current deputy speaker. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was for and, four years, yeah. right? So the next thing you want to justify for the top spot, right? So the quality candidate, even my friend Benjamin Kalu, right? So the Southeast is saying it's the, it, it, it should come to the Southeast. He's a quality candidate, so highly charismatic. Is the current <laughs> spokesman. All, of all right, just very in, in, quickly, in 30 seconds, why does it look like consensus is easier for the senators elect, but for the House members elect, it looks like it's a bit difficult uh, for pre the president elect to the, achieve? The, 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 fact, the fact that the numbers, you're talking about 109 members no, 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 and no, no, 360. No. Managing human beings is hard. Mm -hmm. So, one of the qualities of the speaker, managing, managing people, is important. So, 360 people, it's easier to manage. Than one other. But there are many other may, many other reasons, but at least let's, let's leave it at like that. All right. Well, that's a good place to actually leave it. We must thank you immensely, uh, Honorable Akin Alabi. He's uh, um, an honorable member elect. I represent APC or your state, and he will be coming back to the House of Reps in the 10th Assembly. And of course, Honorable Adedeji Olajide from the PDP is also uh, from your state. And it's good to have an Oyo coalition here. <laughs> <laughs> Oyo is one. <laughs> yeah, despite all that's happening. Yeah. So, well, let's hope that the consensus building continues way up until uh, the day of the proclamation, which is uh, June 13. And uh, we can only wish that we have a house that's well respected by Nigerians and then that works for the people. We must thank you so much for joining us on the show. Well, this is where we'll have to draw the curtain on the program today on behalf of our team in London, Lagos, and here in Abuja. Thank you for watching and do enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Sonny Samuel.